Alleluia. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Our processional hymn in the blue hymn book is hymn number 157. He is risen. He is risen. Tell it with a joyful voice. He has crossed his three-day prison. Let the whole wide earth rejoice. Death is conquered, man is free. Christ has won the victory. Come ye sad and fearful hearted, with glad smile and radiant brow. Let small shadows have departed, all his woes are over now. And the passion that he bore, sin and pain can vex no more. He is risen, he is risen, he hath opened heaven's gate. We are free from sin's dark prison. Risen to a holier state, and a brighter Easter beam on our longing eyes shall stream. Let us pray together the color for pure. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires know, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind and with all thy strength. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us, and write both these thy laws in our hearts, we beseech thee. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Glory be to God on high, and in earth peace, goodwill towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee, we give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty. O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sin of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us, for thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord, thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Collect Epistle and Gospel for the Octave Day of Easter are found beginning on page 190. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Almighty Father, who has given thy only Son to die for our sins and to rise again for our justification, grant us so to put away the leaven of malice and wickedness, that we may always serve thee in pureness of living and truth. Through the merits of the same, thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of the epistle. The epistles written in the fifth chapter of the first letter of St. John the Apostle, beginning at the fourth verse. Whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world, but he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God? This is he that came by water and blood even Jesus Christ, not by water only, but by water and by blood. And it, it is the Spirit that beareth witness, because the Spirit is true. For there are three that bear witness, the Spirit and the water and the blood. 
and these three agree in one. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God, which he hath borne concerning the Son. He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar, because he believeth not the witness that God gave of his Son. And this is the witness, that God hath given to us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He that hath the Son hath life. And he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. Here ends the epistle. The gradual psalm is Psalm 118, verses 22 to 25, found on page 484. Page 484, Psalm 118, verses 22 to 25. Let us stand and say this together. The same stone which the builders refused is become the headstone in the corner. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day which the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Help us now, O Lord. O Lord, send us now prosperity. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ is written in the 20th chapter of the Gospel according to St. John, beginning at the 19th verse. Glory be to thee, O Lord. The same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and saith unto them, Peace be unto you. And when he had so said, he showed unto them his hands and his son. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you. As my Father hath sent me, even so send I you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them, and saith unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Whosoever sins ye remit, they are remitted unto them. And whosoever sins ye retain, they are retained. The Gospel of Christ. Praise be to thee, O Christ. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things, visible and invisible, and in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten and not made, being of one substance with the Father, through whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God, and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. From this Sunday's epistle, from the first letter of the Apostle St. John. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. I suspect that you all know the story of Thomas, the Apostle, not one of the several Thomases who are part of our parish family here at St. Mary's. For a long time, he's been called Doubting Thomas, and maybe just a bit unfairly. 
All because of one moment in his life, one incident, one conversation, one moment of indecision. And for that, he's been cursed with the nickname for nearly 2,000 years. And we all know the story. He's the one, of course, who wasn't there on the day the, that the risen Jesus first appeared to the disciples in that dark and fear-filled room. We don't know why he wasn't there. We don't know where he was. Maybe he was out for a walk. Maybe he was trying to find a friend. Maybe he was trying to find something to eat. Maybe he was picking up a coffee at the drive through at Tim Hortons. Whatever Thomas was doing that day, this much we do know for sure. He wasn't isolating with all the rest of the disciples when Jesus appeared. He wasn't with them when their fears were taken away forever, when Christ spoke words of peace to their broken hearts, as we heard in this Sunday's Gospel. And of course, we also know what his response was a little bit later when he got back with his coffee and everyone told him the good news. Unless I see in his hands the mark of his nails and place my finger into the mark of those nails and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. And of course, we also know what happened just one week later, on the eighth day, just as today is for us, one week, the octave day from Easter Day, when Thomas was with all the rest in that less dark and less fearful room, when the risen Christ appeared to them again and showed Thomas his hands and his side, those wounds which spoke so boldly of the agony of the crucifixion and death, those still visible wounds that for all time serve as a reminder of God's great love for us. And perhaps you remember what Thomas said that day, words which should be even more famous than the things he had said the week before. My Lord and my God. Thomas has gotten a lot of grief over the years, and as I said, perhaps a bit unfairly, as the one who doubted, the one who wouldn't believe until he had seen the hard evidence, even though all the other apostles were just as unwilling to believe the stories of the risen Christ when the women first told them. Doubting Thomas, as he's called, who might just as fairly be called bold and faithful Thomas, because he'd had time to think about what the others had been saying. He had time to think about what those reports of resurrection might actually mean, because he had time to see that if Jesus were no longer dead, if somehow, some way, he had risen from the dead after such a cruel and shameful death, then maybe he was something more than just a teacher and a healer. Maybe he was even something more than the Messiah. Maybe he was somehow, some way, actually God himself. My Lord and my God. The journey that Thomas took that week, that journey in heart and mind, that journey of reflection and thought, is the kind of journey that we need to take every day of our lives. If we are to understand what the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead means for us. If we are to understand what resurrection means when everything seems to be falling down around us, when uncertainties become when certainties become uncertainties in the blink of an eye, when we're not sure what the next six months are going to look like, let alone the next six years, when we're not sure about our jobs or our health or the people that we care about the most. What difference does resurrection actually make? Not just in the larger picture, but in the smaller day-to-day -day way in which life has to be lived out. What difference does the fact that Jesus has risen from the dead and conquered death and defeated the power of sin mean when we have to get up tomorrow and try to make sense of life with both its joys and its sorrows? But if, if like Thomas and millions and millions of, of Christ followers throughout the past 2,000 years, if we can begin to see how resurrection changes everything, then not just the big things, but the little things as well, then maybe we can begin to understand why the risen Christ challenges the disciples in that fear-filled room on the day of the resurrection, of how he challenges them to model risen lives by modeling hope, by modeling forgiveness. In a world where bitterness is so often the default position in our relationships, doesn't resurrection make so many of our grievances seem foolish and petty?
In a world where fear, and especially undefined fear, drives us to look for security in things that have no certain future, doesn't resurrection remind us that the greatest security is found in God and in his power to hold us close to his heart? In 1875 and 1876, the English poet Gerard Manley Hopkins wrote perhaps his most ambitious poem entitled The Wreck of the Deutschland. It recalls the death of five Franciscan nuns drowned on the German ship Deutschland at the mouth of the Thames in the winter of 1875. One half line, one very brief line, is especially intriguing. Let him Easter in us. Let him Easter in us. How does Christ Easter in you? By giving us a faith that rises above fear and a hope that conquers despair. Worthy is the Lamb who was to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. Blessed be thou, Lord God of Israel, forever and ever. All that is in the heaven and the earth is thine. All things come of thee, and of thine home have we given thee. We offer this Holy Eucharist to the praise and glory of Almighty God, and in joyful thanksgiving for the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and for the promise of new life and new hope which we have in him and in him alone and in prayer that our own lives might be vivid examples of the power of the risen Christ to transform all of life and to bring joy and light to the darkness of the world. In our prayer this day for all of God's people, let us pray, saying, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. On this day that the Lord has made, let us pray for the people whom he has redeemed, that we might live as those who believe in the triumph of the cross. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Let us pray that all people might receive the good news of his victory. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Let us pray that those born to new life in the waters of baptism might know the power of his resurrection. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Let us pray this day for all those who are ill, especially for Merva, James, Aaron, Ruth, Lloyd, Donna, John, Judy, Flora, Dana, Wanda, Cynthia, Eva, Griffin, Christopher, Douglas, Ralph, Eleanor, Richard, Marie, Pius, Larice, Dale, Peter, Lyman, Cedric, Jerry, Debbie, Scott, Peter, Sarah, Ben, Brenda, Pierre, Michael, Wayne, Alan, Graydon, Charles, Adam, Eric, Edith, Martin, Paige, Mindy, Kathy, Wilfred, Teresa, Shane, Rochelle, and Deanna. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Let us pray for all those who are in need of God's grace in other ways this day, remembering Courtney, Linda and Mary, Stella and Hazen, Sandy, Vanda, Wendy, Bobby Joe, Georgia, Joseph, Carol, Ethel, Helen, Larry, Pamela, Mabel, Evelyn, Sam, Shirley, Eldon and Kay, Charlie, Maria, Sheridan, Sandra, Diane, Stacy, Sandra and Randy, Emma, Sean, Brenda, Brian, David, Sean, Gordon and Chelsea. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray that in the undying love of Christ we might be united with all those who have died and now rest in him, remembering especially Jack Siddle, Sandra Allen, 
Les Volter, Audrey Evelyn Robertson, Bob Clayhorn, Jeff Vale, and Clark Green. Rest eternal, grant unto them, O Lord, and let, 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 let like perpetual shine upon them. May they rest in peace. Amen. Amen. Let us commend the world in which Christ rose from the dead to the mercy and protection of Almighty God. And in thanksgiving, let us pray for all efforts to overcome tyranny and despair, to build peace among peoples and nations. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. prayer. Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate, to whom with the and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Amen. Ye that do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbors and intend to lead the new life following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God, meekly kneeling upon your knees. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all we acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdeeds. Have mercy upon us, most merciful God, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of love, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our heavenly Father, who of his great mercy have promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Savior Christ saith unto all that truly turn to him. Come unto me all that labor and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish but have eternal life. Hear also what St. Paul said. This is a true saying and worthy of all to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John said, If anyone sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bounding duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty everlasting God, Creator and Preserver of all things. But chiefly are we bound to praise thee for the glorious resurrection of thy Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, for he is the very Paschal Lamb that was offered for us, and hath taken away the sin of the world, who by his death hath destroyed death and by his rising to life hath restored to us everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee, and say, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord most high. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. Blessing and glory and thanksgiving be unto thee, Almighty God, our heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy didst give thy only Son, Jesus Christ, to take our nature upon him, and to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made thereby his one oblation of himself once offered, a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memorial of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech you, and grant that we receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body 
and blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as often as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, we thy humble servants with all thy holy church, remembering the precious death of thy beloved Son, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again in glory, do make before thee, in this sacrament of the holy bread of eternal life, and the cup of everlasting salvation, the memorial which he hath commanded, and we entirely desire thy fatherly goodness, Mercifully to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant, that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And we pray by the power of thy Holy Spirit, all we who are partakers of this holy communion, may be fulfilled with thy grace and heavenly benediction. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, <clears throat> by whom and with whom in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. And now as our Savior Christ hath commanded and taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with thy spirit. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful God, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy feet. Thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so be the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his blood, and our souls washed with his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in the king, and he in us. Amen. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, Grant us thy peace. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Take and eat this, in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your heart by faith in his spirit. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is shed for us, preserve your body and soul and everlasting. Drink this in remembrance that Christ's blood was shed for you, and we thank God.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee that thou dost graciously feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, assuring us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are living members of his mystical body, which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee. And although we are unworthy, yet we beseech thee to accept this, our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you, and remain with you always. Amen. Again, in the blue hymn book, our recessional hymn will be Ye Choirs of New Jerusalem. Which is hymn numbers 169. Ye choirs of New Jerusalem, your sweetest notes employ, the pastoral victory to him in strains of holy joy. For Judah's lion burst his chains. Crushing the serpent's head, and cries of the through death's domains to wake the imprisoned dead. Devouring depths of hell, their prey at his command restore. His ransomed hosts pursue their way where Jesus goes before. Triumphant in his glory now, to him all power is given. To him in one communion bow, all saints in earth and hell. While we his soldiers praise our king, his mercy we implore. Within his palace bright to bring and keep us evermore. All glory to the Father be, all glory to the Son, all glory, Holy Ghost, to thee, while endless ages run. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. Let us go forth in peace. Alleluia, alleluia. In the, In the name, name of the Lord. Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. Alleluia.